that brought him over to Australia. And, uh, and that was the first phase. The second phase was, of course, here's a guy who's going to try and play Australian rules football. Now, when he first came to the club, he went down to Jollymont. Adrian Madison, who played for Melbourne, was uh, in the offices, and Ray Jordan said, Bado, go and have a kick with Jimmy. Now, he stood about 15 metres apart, and Jimmy couldn't hit the side of a barn, I can tell you. But one thing Jimmy could do was run like Horace Gump. He would win every running race at 199 centimetres. The only time we beat Jimmy is that far out in front, he'd get lost on where to go and we'd kind of sneak up and win. So he had that great competitiveness, and, but his skills were poor. So he had this little technique of putting the hand under the ball. Uh, he got a little bit better move the hand around to the side of the ball, but he'd only kick the ball over 25, 30 metres. And it was great to kick to if you're a leading forward because he'd just pop it up but it helped you maintain possession, moving the ball out the back line. I think it's been documented that people used to see Ruckman back in those days as sitting behind the ball, taking big marks, and kind of the big man pack guys, whereas Jimmy was the link running, kind of running Ruck Rover. So he reinvented the game to a certain degree, but people were very critical at the same time. In 1986, he got the flick, go back to Paran and try and work it out. Now, Jimmy, by his own admission, had to work out whether to go home. And he didn't go home because he'd be so embarrassed to face his friends and family. In 1987, he won the reserves best and fairest and played in the finals in the seniors. And then he became a regular senior player. But even in 1991, he went through a tough stage where he just couldn't get a kick, you know, you'd go through bad form. And he was gonna get dropped early in 91. Gary alluded to it last night. He ended up winning the Preston Ferris and the Brownlow in that year. And then he played 244 in a row and won three best and fairest in, in, in a row. And, Jimmy was all about breaking down the opposition and probably there's two endearing factors as a player. The first one was that you knew what you were going to get. He was always going to deliver. He was always going to deliver. So you could always back him in. Didn't matter what he injury he had, what type, he was going to give everything he had. But the second thing was he would run his opponents into the ground. And in the second half would always have an extra player. So he made a significant contribution uh, as a player. And then, of course, he went through the reach phase, Victorian of the Year twice, and did some amazing things. Now, Jimmy, by his own admission, Jimmy, by his own admission, he said, I never knew this was going to get as big as it has. So he was very into trying a lot of things. Not unlike businessmen here, you try things, yet we'll do that, we'll do that. He probably got three things wrong, but got this right, and then just saw the opportunity and, and helped drive it to the level uh, that it came to. And I thought the biggest thing with Jim was that his courage to put himself out there. I mean, that documentary was all about messages to help people. Now, some people get saved in, like Kevin Sheedy and you know, different guys that they kind of promote themselves more than what they're trying to promote. But that comes with the territory. So some people could, be, could have been a bit critical of Jimmy when he was on the front foot all the time. But at the end of the day, he was always driving a good course. And I think the messages came through in the end. But it was enormous courage in what he was doing. And then of course the Melbourne Football Club had folded three times in 30 years, the merge with Hawthorne in 96, 86 with Fitzroy, and then $5 million in debt. Jimmy didn't want to do it. Jimmy did not want to be president. He just started his Pelican Child Care Centre. He uh, had two young children. Uh, Reach was going, you know, needed more and more leadership. But at the end of the day, he was the only person who could unify our club. Melbourne's greatest strength was our greatest weakness. Our greatest strength has been the MCG. That's our home ground since 1858. But we couldn't make any money out of that ground. So we've always been broke. So we can never invest in relationships. Just like your businesses, trying to invest in relationships. We could never do it. We ended up with the least supporters. So because we were broke, not only that, we were fracturing relationships. Because you'd have a relationship, then you'd burn someone, and then you'd burn another person because you're always looking for the quick buck. That's what happened at Melbourne. So the only guy who could unify everyone around the club was Jimmy. So Jimmy took it on, and once he took it on, he was on the front foot. He worked out every top businessman in Australia that's right from Melbourne. He rang them all and he put the hard word on them. Would you consider coming on the board? Then he took those 30, 40 names and worked out a board of 10. And from that point on, as a board, they've led the way and got us back on our feet and back in the game. So there's four big stages of Jim, Jim Stein's career and the whole package arguably makes it the greatest story in the game.